Eyes are the prize. Eyes are the prize. Uh, you know, we often hear eyes on the prize, and it's related here. But uh, what I was thinking really today about uh, Matthew 4, 1 to 11, and I've spoken about this quite a bit. It's when Jesus is uh, led by the Spirit into the desert to be tested. And so these 11 verses, we have Jesus out in the desert being uh, tested and tried. I mean, uh, he has fasted 40 days and 40 nights, so he is weak, and the devil comes to him. And uh, really, this is what I want to focus on here. Uh, there's so much in this. It is it is amazing and stretching. But, you know, the devil comes to Jesus and uh, starts by questioning uh, his identity. That That's his platform. He wants to shake his identity. Now, he says, if you are the son of God, you will or will you. But he keeps prefacing his test by saying, if you are the son of God. So it's like, prove to me now who you are. Now, honestly, the devil doesn't doubt that Jesus is the son of God. That's precisely why the devil is attacking him. It's because the devil knows he's the son of God. He needs no proof. And you know, your enemy and my enemy, the devil and people, we we're told in Ephesians 6, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. So at the end of the day, the enemy will always be the devil even if it is in the face of or through people. And the devil will do to us what he did to Jesus. He will come after your identity. If you are truly a Christian, if you are truly a good person, if you are truly consistent with this and with that, you will, won't you? It's the same thing. You know, we're made in the image of God, Genesis 1.27. We have eternity in the hearts, in our hearts, Ecclesiastes 311 and the enemy is convinced already about Christ in you the hope of glory Colossians 127 he doesn't need proof he doesn't question your authenticity because he is honestly looking for proof or needs proof he comes so that our eyes will be taken off the lord and and we will look to him, why? Well, our pride is shaken now. He, he's questioning who I am. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at him and I'm going to prove to him who I am. Well, we start going through our mind and our heart and we start thinking about why it is we are what we are. Now, the game's already over. We've taken our eyes off the Lord, off his report about who we are. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, anyone who is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new is gone. We've taken our eyes off this. We are now looking at the enemy who is trying to get our attention. He's got our attention, and now we start to address him. And when we do that, we, we've already lost. We've taken our eyes off the Lord, and we've put our eyes on the enemy. We go where our eyes go. That's why the title of this is The Eyes Are the Prize. Hebrews 11.6 Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Jesus calls us to lift our eyes and to look to Him all through Scripture. That is what He wants from us. There are going to be lies. There's going to be people questioning us. 1 John 3.20 says our own heart will condemn us. Revelations 12.10, it says the devil himself is an accuser. And he comes after us. So God knows that there's going to be winds and waves of accusation and challenge in our lives. And the test is do we get distracted and take our eyes off the prize and, and give our eyes to someone else? And, and, you know, our eyes are the prize of God's. He wants us looking to him, listening to to him, not heeding the reports of others and looking to the left or to the right. Have you ever had a kid in your life or some friend and they're they're obsessed with someone else's report or someone else's accusation or someone else's threat and they might be with you but they're they're kind of looking this way. And you're trying to get their attention. You're like, don't look over there, look here, look here. And they keep looking over there. And 
The reason you want them to look here is because where their eyes are, in a sense, their faith is, their heart is, the report they're going to believe is from the person to whom they're looking. And if they're with you, but their eyes are over here on an opposition, you know that as long as their eyes are looking over there and they fear and, 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 they're, and they're kind of locked on trying to deal with this or that person, you know that they, the game's already over. And so you're saying, no, you got to look here. You, you got, even if that voice keeps chanting, you look here. And God is exactly the same with us. Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. We can't huddle up to the Lord in the church, but really our eyes are constantly on the enemy and our eyes are constantly on what people are saying about us and our our, our, our heart is constantly grappling with reports of accusation. We can't. God wants us to look to him. Now, going back to Matthew 4, 1 to 11, the devil says, if you are the son of God, you will turn this stone into bread. Jesus does something very interesting. He doesn't say, oh, okay. He does not look to the enemy. He simply responds with truth over the falsehood. He quotes from Deuteronomy 8.13. He says, man cannot live on bread alone. That's what he does. He doesn't, he doesn't get perturbed or lock on or go, oh, well, devil, I'll prove to you that I'm the son of God. I, I can turn this loaf into bread. Or, um, no, he doesn't dispute it. He simply states the revelation of truth that comes from God his Father. Why? Because in John 5.19... We're told that Jesus, Jesus said, I do only what I see my father doing. And he keeps his eyes on the Lord. And the Lord will speak to untruthful situations, but he won't set his eyes on the accuser and, and give in to their terms. So then the devil does it again. I mean, dark. He quotes from Psalm 91, 11 and 12. He quotes messianic, prophetic scripture to the Messiah. But Jesus still does not engage it or get perturbed by it. He, he The devil leads him to a high place. Qu and it, so much in there. Was Jesus tempted to try to get out of the journey that was ahead of him when he's at the highest point of the temple and the devil says, throw yourself down. I mean, what, what's the test there? What's the temptation there? Maybe Jesus had so much fear and despair about the journey of the cross that he was thinking, if I just end it all, you know, the devil says, throw yourself. The angels will catch you, Jesus. Instead of this hard road God has for you, throw yourself off here. You're going to have a soft landing. It says in Psalm 91, 11 to 12, the angels will catch you. And again, Jesus reaches for scripture and just speaks the truth of God over the devil, quoting Deuteronomy 6, 16, do not test God. That's all he says. He doesn't go, well, I truly am. And if I wanted to, I could. But the reason I don't is because, no. He simply hears what God is saying in this untruthful situation and speaks it over and through, cutting through like a knife, the false report of the enemy. Jesus' eyes are not taken from the Lord. His eyes are his prize to God, his gift to God. He keeps them on the Lord and he speaks over and through the false report of the devil. And then he does it again. Uh, the devil then shows his colors. He, he takes them again, shows them the land, and says, just bow down and worship me. And I think this is fascinating. As Jesus continues to speak true report over and through the false report, but not giving the devil the satisfaction of getting off course or focusing on him, the devil finally shows his true colors. He says, just bow down and worship me. And... That's when Jesus says, he quotes Deuteronomy 6, 13, you should worship only the Lord your God. And there's, there's victory. There's victory there. Keep your eyes on the Lord. It, 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 it's your prize. Keep your eyes on the prize, your prize, but also your eyes on the Lord is your gift to the Lord. When the devil speaks, when temptation or accusation or threats or, you know, come across your path. Don't look. Don't look to the enemy. Don't look to this face or that face or that relative or this friend. Don't, don't, don't even 
in your mind's eye, engage their face. Just keep it to the left. Keep your eyes on Jesus and smile and keep walking in truth and let God speak truth to you and you will not be deterred. The true you is in his hands. The true you is in his hands. And uh, uh, I think it's 2 Timothy 2.19 and um, Galatians 2.20. And uh, a very powerful verse, uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians 8, 3. It's about God's love really on you and holding you. It's it's either 1 Corinthians 8, 3 or 2 Corinthians 8, 3. Those first three verses, powerful focus uh, that kind of frames up other issues. Um, God bless you. <laughs>